So I'm just going to quickly talk in this video uh, about what is known as an if statement or what are known as if statements in Python. So let's imagine, for example, in the real world, uh, you're given a certain condition such as it's raining. Now, as a human, if it's raining, you might use an umbrella. So we could say if it is raining, use an umbrella. Otherwise, slash else, if it is not raining, do not use an umbrella. Or, we could say, if a number is greater than another number, it is the biggest of the two numbers. We could say things like, if I am older than a five-year-old, I am more than five years old. That's not necessarily true because you could be five and a half years old and this five-year-old could be five and a half years old if we're talking integers, but we're not going to consider that case. We're just going to say generally, if you're older than a five-year-old, you probably aren't five years old. And generally, if you're watching this video, you're probably not five years old either. So these are logical statements um, that we, we can see in the real world. And they follow a certain pattern. So they follow the pattern of if x is true, then y happens. Else, if x is not true, then z happens or nothing happens. So an example of this is, let's say, i dot e dot, if it is raining, I will wear a jacket, else I will wear a t-shirt only, okay? Or we could say, i dot e dot, if it is raining, I will wear a jacket, else, no, I will use an umbrella, that's probably a better metaphor, else I will not use one, i.e. nothing happens, okay? So, there's actually a, a set of statements called if statements in Python that more or less have the same effect. So let's imagine uh, that we have a Boolean called raining, and raining equals true at the moment. Now we can make a statement that starts with if, and we can say if raining, okay? Now, what this is saying is that if raining is true, if raining is true, then do the following, yeah? Do the following. So if raining is true, print it is raining, yeah? And I've selected that and it's printed out it is raining. Okay, let me change this to false now, and it will not print out anything. Oh, it will print. The reason it printed that out because I didn't run that it was false because I'm a forgetful man. See that it prints out nothing because this condition hasn't been met. So if condition is true then do um then execute 
this code basically is what we're saying. So if raining is true, which it isn't, then we execute the code within the if statement here, which is it is printing it is raining. Notice that after the if statement there is an indent here. So if we don't include that indent, um, this code will not be included in the if statement. To demonstrate that, I'll change raining to true. And because raining is true, if the raining condition has been met, i.e. is true, then we will execute the print statement of it is raining. And it is true, so it should execute. And it has. Now, if I move this backwards, I mean, it may not even allow me to do anything here. So, if raining. See that? Unexpected EOF. So, let's put that all together here. Expected an indented block. You see that? It wanted an indent, but it didn't get one. Okay. If, for example, I put two statements, it is raining, and then I should wear a coat. Because raining is true right now, I'll print them both. But if I indent this, Need them both, but it's not correct, so I'll make it false. Okay, I'll make raining equal false. So this if statement shouldn't execute, but I should wear her coat has been printed out. That's because it's not within, it's not indented, so it's not within the if statement, so it's just executed normally. Okay, so that's just me proving that anything that's not indented will not be registered as though it's part of this if statement, okay? I'll do a couple more if statements, so we'll say if, oops, not a capital if, if um, happy, um, we'll give happiness a value, we'll, 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 we'll put happy as true, because I don't want to be miserable, happy is equal to true, if happy, then print I am so, so happy with that. And then we'll do a little smiley face. So, okay, so it prints because it's true. We'll f prove it again that it prints when it's true. Oh, I'm not happy, how sad. And it won't print now because happy is false, okay? So that's basically just proving that concept with Two separate uh, if statements. I'll just repeat here if the condition is true, then execute this code. Okay. Now, let's say I want to know if one number is bigger than the other. So if one is more than two, well, if that's a true statement, then the following will execute. So I'm comparing one and two with each other. And if the statement that f that follows on from the if, one is greater than two, is true, then the following will print. One is greater than two. It's the best number, in fact. <laughs> oh, dear. One is clearly not greater than two, all right? And to test it, we'll put if three is greater than two. So what you've noticed here, and you may be a little bit confused, is that this isn't a Boolean value. Well, no, the sum three is greater than two isn't a Boolean value, no. It's not a true or false value. But the answer to the question, three is greater than two, is either going to be true or false. And really we're saying if the answer to the question is three greater than two is true, then print this. And that's the reason why when we said if the answer to one is greater than two is true, then print this, okay? It's printed one is greater than two. It shouldn't have printed that. Well, it should have because the code execute correctly, but I should have changed it to three. So yeah. If the question being 
asked being answered i dot e dot three is greater than two is true or a boolean value is the condition is the condition if the question being answered is true then um, execute code execute code and I'll put another note here sorry it's just because I'm doing single line comments I didn't want it to be part of the code if in the above a boolean is given rather than a question asked to produce a boolean then the if statement will check to see if the boolean is true or false confused yes so am i so basically this is asking if condition is true then execute code but if it's not if the condition itself isn't a boolean value if the if it's a question then it's asking if the answer to this question is true and essentially if i substitute this for happy i'm just saying if happy is true now happy in itself is already a boolean value and it's true here so happy will be true okay because it's a boolean true the statement three is greater than two is true so it would hold a boolean value of true so whilst that's not necessarily a boolean in itself three or two aren't booleans the question answer of one of them greater than the other will be true or false it will result in a boolean so it's either going to be true or false in this case three is greater than true two so it becomes a true boolean okay try and wrap your heads around that so we can also do if three is greater than two then print da -da 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 -da, whatever else print not true so in the case that this here isn't true this second statement will actually uh, be executed now in this case three is bigger than true so the second second statement wouldn't be executed okay let's now substitute that three and that two for some real numbers so we'll do n1 is equal to nine and n2 is equal to 11 okay and now we'll ask if n1 is greater than n2 then print so n1 greater than n2 n2 greater than n1 n2 is greater than n1 so you'll notice that the else statement is the one that's actually been printed out what the else statement does is if this if statement isn't true it will print anything else whatever else is the truth it'll print it however there is one more statement so there's not just the if and the else statement there's if so if n1 is greater than n2 we can print n1 is greater than n2 in this case it isn't so this won't execute we could also put l if which basically means else if so l if n1 is less than n2 we can print 
and 2 is greater than n1. And then an else statement will print n2 is not greater than or lesser than n1. Okay? So I'll just copy this here. So, you're probably a lot more confused now. There are three statements. There's else if, which is represented as l if. There's if, and there's else. So, we basically say if something is true, then this. Else if a different thing is true, then this. We could have, we can only have one if in one of these lines of statements, I think. And then you could have several else ifs saying, well, if it's not this, uh, maybe it's this. And if it's not this, then it could be this, blah, blah, blah. The else statement just means if none of all the above is true, then do this. So the if statement says if this is true, then this. And the if statement is the first start of this statement. This is the first start. The if statement always comes in these blocks of if and else statements. Okay, it always comes at the start. Then we can put several else ifs given many different conditions and comparing number one to number two in many different ways. And the else will just catch everything else and will respond in a way depending on what everything else is. So, for example, here, if I actually use this, it should say n2 is greater than n1. All right. Which will show that the else if is actually the if statement that's been caught here. Now... If I put them both as 11 as the same number, the else statement should be uh, the statement that's been caught. And there you go, n2 is not greater than or less than n1. So there you can see that the else statement has, catched, er, has caught everything else. And I'll show you an if else if statement with lots of ifs and else ifs. I'll just make a few, uh, I'll just make a few new numbers, nu1, NU2, NU3, NU4. Okay. Oh, we'll just do NU3 up to NU3 actually. So, 1, 2, and 3. Pretty simple, really. Pretty simple. So, if N u1 less is greater than nu2 then we'll print now we'll just have nu1 and nu2 actually nu1 greater than nu2 if nu1 is greater than nu2, is less than, sorry, nu2, print nu2 greater than nu1. Elif nu1 equals equals, now equals equals means is equal to rather than is if that's equal to one then we can print then we can print nu1 is of value one else print i have no idea what is going on in actual sense if the else uh, pops up, it's just because nu1 and nu2 are the same and nu1 isn't 1. So if at any point, if nu1 is 1 and it's more and it's the same value as nu2 or nu2 is less than nu1, sorry, no, they have to be the same value. So if nu1 is greater than nu2, i.e. if nu2 is 2, 
NU2, uh, this, this if statement will uh, come up, which is NU1 is greater than NU2, okay? Then, if NU2 is greater than NU1 instead, and th then the else statement, the, uh, the, second, the first elif statement, NU2 greater than NU1, will print. What? One greater than NU2. Ah, yeah, I haven't changed them yet there, that's why. So it should print NU2 greater than NU1. Else, if they're the same value and NU1 isn't equal to 1, it should print out, I have no idea what's going on. But if NU1 is 1 and NU2 is 1, then this should print NU1 is a value 1. Why is that, you might wonder? Well, I'll leave that question to you guys. Um, I'm not sure how well I've explained this, but I'm, there's going to be a practice on this anyway, so don't worry too much about it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this.